you have likely seen it a thousand times. The swordsman calmly reaches for his katana, and in the blink of an eye, unsheaths it in a single fluid stroke. After a few stifled seconds, his target's wounds gush with blood, and he falls over dead. This is Eido, the art of the quick draw. Or at least, this is what is commonly interpreted as Eido. This technique is so often represented in films, manga, and games that it's become an iconic technique in fiction, despite its true historical origins. It should come as no surprise that it has found its way into many different fighting games. So today, we're going to talk about the history and culture of Eido, and how it is represented through the mechanics of fighting games. The word Eido consists of two terms. Ei, which can be loosely translated to mental awareness or swift reaction, and Do, which can be loosely translated to the way or the art. Put together, it roughly means the art of mental sharpness and swift action. And as you might have guessed, the main focus of Eido is the technique of drawing a katana from its sheath and striking in the same stroke. But hold on, some of you might be asking. I thought it was called Eijutsu. And yes, it is. But hold on, even fewer of you might be asking. I thought it was called Batojutsu. And yes, for you Rory Kenshin fans out there, it is. In total, there is Eido, Eijutsu, Batodo, and Batojutsu. So what's the difference? The short answer is that it's just a matter of semantics, tradition, and practice. The more precise distinction is in the difference between the suffixes do and jutsu. Where do means way or art, jutsu can be loosely translated to mean martial technique. In times of war, like the Sengoku Jidai, Ei Jutsu was taught to samurai with the intent of being utilized in battle, in self-defense, or in defense of their lord. It is trained as a practical technique to be wielded when necessary. By contrast, Iaido is taught in times of peace as an art form. It is practiced to preserve a tradition, or purely for its own sake. The strongest distinction between the two is how they are practiced. Iaijutsu is practiced by cutting straw mats to demonstrate the technique and to put it to use whereas Eido is practiced by performing kata, preferring instead to maintain its forms and abide by its ryuha. So what is Eido used for? There are some practical applications. Should a samurai find himself disarmed or attacked by surprise, he can immediately draw his sword and defend himself. But the theoretical application of Eido assumes a very specific scenario. You'll notice that most Eido kata begin from the Seiza position. This assumes that a samurai needs to be ready to fight even from their most vulnerable position, likely while escorting his lord to conduct negotiations. Should someone at the table draw a sword or an attacker appear by surprise, a samurai must be ready to cut down any assailant. And there you have it, the real, historical Eido a seemingly simple but elegant martial art. The question still remains, how did we get from this to this? This cinematic phenomenon can be traced all the way back to classic samurai films from the works of directors like Akira Kurosawa and Masaki Kobayashi. Shanbara, which can be roughly translated as sword fighting films, focused on the lives and struggles of swordsmen. As a subgenre of Jidai Geki films, most of these films were set in the Edo era of Japan. Following the rise of the Tokugawa shogunate, the samurai way of life was on the decline. With the war over, samurai who were not employed by the Tokugawa either found employment elsewhere or became masterless ronin. With no need for open field warfare, samurai no longer wore armor, 
which means now there's a lot of dangerous men with swords running around and no armor to protect you. Despite the relative peace, it was still a dangerous time where anyone with a sword could unexpectedly cut you down on the streets, making it the perfect setting for Chanbara films. Iaido was not the only art used for this purpose, of course. Many forms of kenjutsu were employed for dueling between samurai, and in fact some duels even hinge on using the right style or technique for the job. But the nature of Iaido focusing on the quick draw technique makes it the most popular and exciting by far. Directors like Kurosawa and Kobayashi were masters of creating on-screen tension, especially in their signature samurai duels. Two swordsmen will square off, gripping their weapons, knowing that the battle could end in a single stroke. They have to measure their approach carefully, or they might pay for their impatience with their lives. Every second is drawn out, allowing the audience to feel the gravity of the situation and what's at stake. And then, all of a sudden, swords are drawn, strikes are exchanged, and there is a few stifled seconds before the audience even knows who's been cut down. If this sounds similar to the Western quick draw duel, you'd be correct. Classic spaghetti westerns borrowed liberally from Jidai Geki samurai films, not just plot points and characters, but even their cinematography. In practice, it makes the samurai and the cowboy cinematic parallels of one another, prone to the same tropes even in gameplay. Over time, what began as a cinematic tool to build tension has gained more stylized elements with each iteration. You can find examples of this as early as 1962's Tale of Zatoichi, in which the titular blind swordsman demonstrates his flash-cut technique. The growing popularity of samurai in fiction gave rise to the common mythology of the katana, the fantasy of superior thrice-folded nippon steel that can cut through virtually anything. And with it, a fictional form of Iaido was born, the fantasy of a draw technique so fast that it defied the laws of space and time. So much emphasis is placed on the draw cut that characters using Iaido will repeatedly return their sword to the scabbard so they can perform it multiple times. Logically, this doesn't make any sense because once you've already drawn your sword, the fight has already started and you need it to defend yourself. But on the other hand, it looks f***ing cool. Look, I'm not a martial arts snob. I'm not above my fascination with samurai and martial arts culture. I think real-world Iaido is a beautiful art form. But I also get pumped up every time I see this. If there is any place in media where the fantasy of martial arts is brought to life, it's in video games. Not just fighting games, but any game that features the katana will often feature the ability to perform a fantastical draw cut. Video games have a tendency to be even more liberal with what the draw cut can actually do. Sometimes it's a flurry of slashes faster than the eye can see, other times it, the cut is so fast and sharp that it actually reaches further than the weapon itself, with the pinnacle of technique often being several light speed slashes over a wide area happening in a fraction of a second. One quality that all Iaido cuts share is near instantaneous speed. The blade leaving the scabbard is like a bullet leaving the chamber, the threat of which makes it near impossible to react to. However, most video games build a clever drawback to the power and speed of Iaido. Time. To balance out how fast the EI slash comes out, characters are often required to prepare the slash in some way. You have to drop into a special stance, or perhaps you have to build up power. This gives the EI slash a sort of wind-up that the player has to account for. Additionally, the instantaneous speed of the draw cut serves as both its strength and its weakness. With a more conventional weapon strike, the weapon continues to threaten space for as long as it is traveling along its arc. But an EI slash happens so quickly that once it comes and goes, it can no longer threaten space. Thus, the attack becomes a tool with a long startup, minimal active frames, and a long recovery. Much like a gun, in fact. 
Using Iaido properly then becomes a matter of patience and precision, anticipating an enemy's movement and preparing to strike them when they least expect it. Naturally, many of Iaido's cinematic visual signatures translate into literal mechanics in fighting games. The passing slash that's normally used for dramatic framing is instead a literal crossing attack, allowing an Iaido character to slip past their foe with a swift running stroke. The delay that happens while the swordsman sheathes their sword is instead a literal stun that freezes the opponent in place while waiting for the attack to finish. The application of Iaido as a counter-offensive style that strikes an opponent after they've swung first often gives an Iaido character a good excuse to have a counter move of some kind. It's also a common pattern that most Iaido characters will have some kind of directional cut that needs to be aimed with precision to snipe at opponents within range. The qualities of an Iaido character are so iconic that you don't even have to have a sword to fight like one. Iaido appears so often in fighting games that an archetype has formed around it. Whenever you see a character take a sheathed katana into battle, you have certain expectations of what they'll do. Terrifying normals that command the mid-range, lightning fast specials that punish you for daring to get too close, and instantaneous movement that disrespects your neutral. And perhaps I'm speaking poetically, but I believe part of these expectations also lends itself to bringing the martial art back to its cinematic roots. Facing against an Iaido character means having to be wary of their reach and speed, and the way you approach them may very well be a life or death situation. Just like the samurai who take every silent second to assess their opponent, staring down the space between you and an Iaido character is a dare. When blades are finally drawn, are you fast enough to beat their quick draw? No, you're not. Select your fighting style! That's all for today's Style Select. I knew that if I put Iaido on a pole, it would immediately sweep, so I saved it for a special occasion. Big thanks to anyone who waited around for me, I'm excited to be making more videos. As always, be sure to leave a like and a comment, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content from Trigger Punch. We still have a Patreon if you'd like to support us, gain early access to future content, and vote on future episodes of Style Select. I'm ABI and I'm glad to be back.